Today on The Young and the Restless, Nate spots a text from Tucker to Mamie. Diane suggests that Jack retire, and Audra gets Kyle to confirm his commitment. Jack and Diane have tea at the Abbott estate, and she tells him that Ashley went out to tie up some loose ends, that as soon she ignored his advice and went off to see Tucker. When he tries calling his sister, he only gets voicemail. His wife tells him they can't stop Ashley, he's still worried about his sister walking into the lion's den. She reminds him that he and Billy just tried it, so what's the difference? He points out they weren't married to him twice. She's sure the only one of them with a chance to get through to McCall is his sister. Jack just can't stand the idea of that low life hurting his sister again. Kyle wanders into the living room on his way out. He tells them his plans for the day with Harrison, and he has a meeting about a prospective job later. He's not giving any details about the latter. His parents wish they could convince him to return to Jabbat, and he reminds them all they have to do is replace Billy with him. After thinking it over, Jack is willing to offer him the COO position. Kyle takes that as an insult and wants his old job back, insisting that he deserves it. When Jack won't cave to the demand, his son gets smarky and walks out. Diane tells her husband that their son is right. QO is an insult and the right thing to do is dump Billy before he can harm the company. Jack can't handle what that might do to Billy. It might throw him into a tailspin. His wife still thinks that Kyle is the future. When Jack admits he can't think up another option, she suggests he step down and let his brother and son run Jabba together. That would mean he wouldn't have to think about running a corporation, and they would have time to do all the things they have fantasized about. That's food for thought. The only downside Jack can see. How long would it take for Kyle and Billy to kill each other? Ashley arrives at Tucker's suite at the athletic club. He tries some small talk, but she can't handle that. He assumes she has something important on her mind and assures her he has no nefarious scheme against her family. If she's there to chase him out of town, she should know her brother's already failed. After telling him to shut up, Ashley says she's sorry. As he pours them coffee, he asks if she had some change of heart after rejecting his overtures. She claims she just started listening to her heart. Tucker is sure she expects him to let his guard down. Ashley isn't loving anything about this. It's a struggle. He wonders what her apology would look like if it was genuine. Closing his eyes, Tucker asks if they can go back to how things were before their fight in Paris. Ashley can't do that, and she won't turn her back on Jabot. The company they planned also won't happen. Tucker wonders what Ashley is sorry about then. She clarifies that she's not sorry for telling Jack that he terrifies her, and urges him to take accountability. McCall admits he got mad. Ashley exclaims that he was in a blind rage and made her feel scared of him. Tearing up, Ashley tells Tucker that his lack of regret says a lot. Tucker insists he's sorry for the way he expressed himself. Ashley says she'll take responsibility for tearing up his world, but it wasn't calculated. The bottom line is they are both responsible. Can't they just try to put the anger behind them? He wonders what that would actually mean. She has no answers. Tucker thinks this all seems like an uncharacteristic misstep on her part. There seems to be no point to this. Ashley tells him she just wanted to start a conversation and thinks they should agree they are both to blame. In the dining room of the GCAC, Nate knows that his great-aunt wants to lure him away from Newman, but he insists that this would be a terrible time to leave. Mamie is sure that his colleagues are only thinking of themselves, so he should only think of himself too. Hastings refuses to leave Victoria in the lurch. Mamie prods him for details and he suggests she stop snooping. His great-aunt tells him that there is some exciting action coming up at Chancellor Winters. He's not unhappy where he is, but he wonders what she has planned that she thinks will make Jill's head explode. All in good time, she teases. Nate warns if she has some kind of coup in the works. He thinks that would be a monumentally bad idea. When you imagine a prisoner of war, is this what you imagine? Ashley comes in and rushes over to hug Mamie, who is sorry her marriage didn't work out. Another one bites the dust, Ashley shrugs. Hugging her again, Mamie suggests she join them and tell her all about it. The abbot convinces her to come home with her to see the rest of the family. Mamie gets a text from Tucker, requesting a meeting. Nate spots it but stays silent as his great-aunt and Ashley walk out. In the park, Kyle plays with Harrison and recalls Audra pitching an alliance with her and Tucker to run Jabot. Audra pops up in pink. 
They resist kissing where Harrison can see them. She reminds Kyle of their meeting with Tucker later and confesses that he doesn't trust him. Kyle doesn't blame him but how can he change his mind? She suggests there will be a loyalty test. They discuss his ambition and smartness. She's sure Kyle knows this alliance is a brilliant way of securing his future, unless something has changed. He made it clear to his father what would have to happen to make him return, but his father only offered him the measly CUO position. None of this makes sense to her and she doesn't understand all the concern about Billy. Kyle explains his uncle has a fragile psyche that easily implodes. She had no idea and asks what kind of dark places Billy went. Kyle won't get into it. Audra points out that his father and uncle might implode when Jabot is ripped away from them. Is he okay with that? Instead of answering, Kyle tells her that his aunt is back from Paris and is playing things close to the vest. Audra starts to worry. He admits Ashley warned him that she's using him for information about his family. She's not wrong, she says, adding that she's not using him. Kyle makes it clear that he is good with whatever as long as he gets what he wants. When he and Audra first got involved, his family accused him of using her as a distraction, so there is symmetry in them now accusing her of using him. The pain is gone and he's still with her. Kyle's dying to know more of how Tucker plans to pull off this takeover. After she gets a text, Audra says that he might not have to wait much longer. Tucker is eager to meet if he is still available. Kyle affirms he is. After he walks off to say goodbye to his son, she calls Tucker and tips him off about Ashley's return. He already knows and will fill her in later. Right now, bring me Kyle Abbott, he says. On their way into the club, Audra and Kyle bump into Nate, who is pretty frosty with them. As soon as they head upstairs, he sends Lily and Devon a text, saying they need to meet to discuss their great aunt. When they get to Tucker's suite, Kyle has hardly sat down before he's bluntly asked if he's willing to betray his family to secure a higher position at Jabot. Kyle confirms that he is. McCall asks why he should believe he's telling the truth. Mamie and Ashley arrive at the Abbott estate, where Ashley admits to Jack and Diane that she saw Tucker. Jack reminds her that her husband is a wild card and he terrifies her. Ashley claims she was only trying to get inside his mind and figure out what he's planning. This was a first step. Jack thinks this game is dangerous and she needs to let it go. Ashley gives him the thumbs up and walks off.